Aloha. My name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. Mahalo for joining me here today on Restaurants of Hawaii on the Think Tech platform. Changes within our Department of Health, the Food Safety Branch, focus on very um, a lot of different topics for restaurants and eateries is what we'll be discussing today, from dogs in restaurants, allergens, and notifications on how they're displayed. And the great news, our permitting costs will not increase. This, <laughs> this may be the one only cost <laughs> not increasing this year, Peter O'Shea. So today I'd like to have my guests in in introduce themselves, but first I want to introduce my dear friend Peter Oshiro with the Department of Health Environmental Health, Health Program Manager, Food Safety Branch. Um, he's going to explain all the revisions and how they will affect both restaurants, eateries, and their guests. So Peter, please introduce yourself, share with our members and viewers a little bit about your background and what you do over there at the Food Safety Branch. Wow, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. The Department of Health is always, especially my program, um, outreach is really, really important. It's much better to have communication, clear communication as to what we're trying to achieve here as a regulatory agency, and especially how that's going to affect both the public and the regulated industry. So we are really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I've been with the department for like uh, 35 years now. I've been program manager for the last 11 or 12. And yeah, I've been with the same program my whole career there. So I do have a vested interest in making sure that um, this program is run the way it's supposed to be able to run. So I'm good comment about the fee thing. Um, I really apologize. I was told by my accountants that the fund was gonna be short in FY25. And then literally after I talked to you folks and I spoke with Cheryl that we're gonna to have to jack your guys' fees. Um, I was told that that was a major accounting error on the order of seven figures, so the fund is stable. So <laughs> we're okay. We don't have to raise fees on you this year anyway. But do keep in mind that the fee last time we did increase it was over 10 years ago. So you know how government agencies kind of wait and wait, and all of a sudden it's $1,000 a year from 300 Yeah, we promise not to do well, I promise not to do that to you folks unless my administrators have some other ideas about how to use your permit fee money. So we're okay. But thanks thank for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge Peter Oshiro. You know, during the pandemic, Peter, we always had a great relationship. You know, Peter ever needs anything to be sent out, information yep. to our mm -hmm. restaurants and eateries. He knows he can always send it to me and I send it out to everyone yeah. so that we can keep those lines of communication. Mm -hmm. Peter and I have always had an excellent, excellent relationship. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He was on speed dial on my phone. <laughs> what we can do, right, to start reopening those eateries, yeah. and restaurants. So I just want to thank you for the relationship, Peter, and always being so willing to take my calls and all my questions. No problem. Yeah, it is transparency. That's the key for any government program. Yeah, so we believe in total transparency. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to have um, Tom Jones, please introduce yourself. Tom Jones um, is with, has been how many decades, Tom? Where, in Hawaii or with the rest of the association? Yes, in, in Hawaii <laughs> or in your lifetime, Tom Jones? I, I moved to Hawaii in 1986 from Tokyo after spending a couple of years over there uh, training as a, a sushi chef. And um, I've been in Hawaii ever since. I've been, I worked for Kyotaru restaurants and also with the Colombian restaurants in the past. Um, I've been on the board of directors for the Hawaii Restaurant Association for about 30 years, maybe 28, 30 years. Um, and uh, and I own the Gyotaku Japanese restaurants. And um, I, I just wanted to also have a shout out to Peter. I, I think back in, I can't remember when, when uh, Kathy Matsunaga was our executive director of the Restaurant mm -hmm. Association and the, um, the you know health department ran up new regulations. Um, you know, they included the Restaurant Association. I was involved in, in some of those, um, you know, uh, reviews of, of the, you know, the new um, regulations. And the uh, State Department of Health has always been very, very uh, business friendly and, and work with the restaurants uh, to make sure that we're able to understand what the regulations are and uh, get educated to, um, you know, to comply with them. So shout out to the the State Department of Health, always helpful. Thanks. 
Thank you, Tom. And to our dear friend, Peter Belisario. I'm going to be calling him Peter B today because we've got <laughs> Peters on the show. Peter Belisario is my food safety guy. Every time I have something, uh, questions about food safety, it's Peter B who is my go-to guy. So Peter B, please share with our members and subscribers a little bit about your background and how you're the food safety guy. Yes, thank you, uh, Cheryl. Um, me and my family, we moved here from New York about 10 years ago. And um, we, well, first of all, we love it here. And um, I have uh, developed working uh, in the food safety end um, of uh, restaurants. And um, I had my own business of uh, providing um, food safety audits to restaurants. And currently I've been here at uh, Diotani going to be about four years now uh, as the food safety manager. Um, I love working here and I really feel that uh, we are part of a, the chain of providing safe food to our uh, restaurants. And also I do want to say thank you very much to Peter Oshiro and his department. Uh, the Department of Health has always been great partners uh, not only with the restaurant association, but with restaurants and making sure that we provide safe food for all of our guests here in Hawaii. Thank I you. really appreciate that. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter. So the first question is to Peter Oshiro. I understand mm -hmm. that the Department of Health is planning to amend HR Chapter 50, the Food Safety Code. Can you please share with our members and subscribers your views on the changes? Yeah, so what all that started with was back in um, 2009, 2010, we decided to adopt a national food code model um, to pattern our regulatory, I guess, um, administrative rule after. I guess it's really important for um, the industry that everybody's on the playing, playing on the same field. And as you know, um, food establishment regulations are over four or 500 different jurisdictions nationwide. And we're lucky that we're under state control most states, the regulations are under county control. So even if the state passes a regulation or adopts a national model, they don't have to um, actually abide by it. Each county will probably make their own rules, set their own fees, and that creates some difficulty we realize for industry, especially for chains um, that have multiple locations in different states. So that's what we started to do back um, then to make sure we had a, a national food code that was recognized. We are on the 2000 and um, 13 code right now, we missed adopting the 2017 and the 2021 food code was delayed publishing due to COVID. And we are now on the 2022 food code. There was a big rush about a month ago that we would have to do this quickly because of financial um, implications. But now that we don't, we're gonna take a more relaxed approach and make sure that we get all the input we need from you guys because there is no financial pressure to do this anymore right away but we do need to catch up to the 22 food code as that is the most current scientific thought on how to regulate food establishments. So we do um, for sure wanna go ahead and do that. So that's actually the basic um, premise on why we're changing uh, or we plan to change our administrative rule. If you folks know, we cannot, um, anytime we change administrative rules, we do not have to go through the legislature, but we do have to go through a public hearings process. And at the public hearings, um, all affected people and the public make comments, and we um, take all those comments into play. We um, actually have to respond to all comments, and if the governor feels that we have responded to everything and our rule is in the best interest of the state, he goes ahead and signs it. So that's how the process works, yeah. So if you guys have any questions about that, um, I can answer that. But that's basically what the impetus is for changing the rule. If Peter or, or Tom, you don't have any questions, I'm going to go through the first, um, which is the major food allergen. Mm -hmm. that, Peter, I'm going to go through that. The number two is going to be the reduced oxygen packaging. Right. And then we'll, we'll go on to all the other topics. But do you have any questions um, to Peter Oshur regarding the changes and how it how it actually happens? I, yeah, I, I do. I was just kind of curious, what what is the time frame that we're looking at in terms of you know, um, and you know, adopting them, and then, uh, you know, how we're going to educate the the restaurant industry about the changes. Yeah, so I was going to push it up to summer, but we're probably going to push it back to fall, winter this year, 
-hmm. So what that means is that um, between then and the actual public hearings, which we'll probably want to hold in, um, later on at the end of the year, um, we're going to have to have a lot of informative meetings with you folks. We don't even have a draft yet. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing is we'll put together the draft of what it looks like exactly when we adopt the national food code. And mm -hmm. basically, we adopt verbatim, almost word for word. And the only things that we differ from the food code are things like our placard program, our fees. Those things are not um, a national standard. But the rule itself is, and that's typically what we'll adopt. There is, on legis sometimes the legislator tries to jump our rule. A lot of times we object to the legislature passing law because we already have a public hearings process mm -hmm. to change our rules and regulations, and we feel that that's worked very well. As you folks, when things go through the legislature, what you originally proposed, the monster that comes out in the end and gets passed typically may not even resemble what you originally tried to um, push through. So we always ask the legislature to defer to us. So there are bills right now to allow dogs in restaurants, which is allowed in the new 2022 food code under certain conditions and only outdoor dining, uh, not indoor dining. So there is a bill that's being introduced to do that. And I don't know if they're trying to circumvent us, but we will testify generally in favor if um, they follow the food code. And we are also gonna have to create guidelines as to actually how we're going to enforce that and what that means and who's responsible um, for having that situation now. But basically that's for the dogs and restaurant thing that we're not um, opposed to it right now. We were in strict opposition every year and we're on the record as saying as soon as the FDA says that they're going to allow it, then we will also adopt it. So the FDA in 2021, 22, they finally did adopt it in the food code under certain conditions. So it doesn't force anybody to do it. It's just an option. If the restaurant owner would like to do it, then we were going to set up guidelines under how they can achieve that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. So, anything else on dogs and restaurants? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna move on then about the allergens. So, Peter Oshiro, do you want to touch a little bit about the allergens? Yeah. So, what this is is this is a rule that's being passed in a food code that's very similar to your consumer advisory for eating raw or undercooked foods. It's going to be the whole the exact same idea. So, what the food code says now is you have an obligation to notify your customers in your restaurant or food establishment operations if you use any of the now nine major allergens. And real briefly, it's um, milk, eggs, fish, crustacean, shellfish three nuts, peanuts, wheat, or soy, and now sesame, which is everything you guys use in your folks' <laughs> restaurants. I would say 90% of the restaurants now use one or a combination of nearly all of these items. So the only, it's going to be kind of ridiculous. Again, this is what happens when people pass these kind of bills. It was intended for only people that use specifically these things, but now they apply it to everybody. So what you guys are going to end up do is simply putting on your menu that statement again that my establishment may use any of these specific nine items in your um, food business. So just beware. If you have a strict allergy, please don't eat here for all any of those items. If you folks absolutely want to say that I have none of these things, then you guys are free to do that and inform the customers that I don't use any allergies in my food um, here at your restaurant or whatever, and then you guys are free to do that also. But if you use any of them, you don't have to list which menu items you're using it for. You just have to make a blanket statement that your establishment has any of these nine um, allergens in your facility and the public needs to be aware of that. And really that's about it. So you can put it on the menu board, you can put it on the menu itself, you can put it on some kind of stanchion, that's a plaque that says, um, we serve these allergens here, beware. And that's the extent of the requirement. Oh, sounds very reasonable. Yeah. And we, again, we because we have not adopted um, the rule yet, it's not a law yet. So just if it does become a law, I don't foresee that this, I may be wrong, but it, we don't consider that this might be a, um, on the level like a code holding violation or a contamination violation, but I'll check to see if this will affect the placards or not, whether, um, you have that warning, whether the Fed views that as a critical violation that would affect something like the placarding. Yeah. 
And Thank well, I would also also recommend that um, allergen notifications would be on uh, the website where people order things online. Okay. Yeah, that that would probably be a requirement also. Yeah. And we probably need to remind people about their raw and um, undercooked items because I don't think everybody does that also. I I see pretty much almost nearly 100% compliance on the brick and mortar restaurants that are there as they serve it. So um, everybody has um, been very accustomed to it already. So I don't think it's going to be an issue for enforcement. And, and Peter Belisario, yeah. you had a question about the ninth major allergen? Uh, the well, uh, yeah, sesame is uh, you know pretty much straightforward, but does that also include sesame oil? Uh, I know that uh, sesame oils can have different levels of re refinement mm -hmm. uh, or highly re refined sesame oils. Uh, would that be Any safe? No, anything at all. Anything that contains the word sesame is going to be an allergen and needs to be declared. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions about dogs and restaurants <laughs> or, <laughs> or allergens, I wanted to go down to the you know the next topic, which is Shiro uh -huh. Your current website is is down, right? And you're switching to a new right. vendor. Can, Do you can I just go back real quickly um, to the dogs and restaurant thing? Because I think two of the main things everybody struggles with, and we get asked constantly, and is um, what can the establishment ask of the person with the animal? And again, we don't make the rules on this. This is all from the Department of Justice and the AD American Disabilities Act. Right. So, and we do not enforce that either at the Department of Health. Um, so the two questions that you can ask or what you're supposed to be asking if someone comes into your facility with a dog and you don't allow it is, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? And two, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? Now be very clear that you cannot ask the person what the dis disability is, nor can you ask the dog, the owner to prove, show me what the dog can do to do it. But if they refuse to answer those two questions, you can absolutely restrict them from entering your establishment. So that's kind of where it is. So if they just tell you a story about it, you got to believe it. Um, and that's pretty much what the law says right now about quote unquote, allowing um, service animals into your facility. Yeah, emotional, um, I guess, is not recognized that an emotional need. It has to be some kind of trained action that the dog was specifically trained to do to help the disabled person. Well, Peter, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. Um, so if someone were to bring a dog into a restaurant mm -hmm. right. in their pocketbook or in a little basket or mm -hmm. whatever, but, mm -hmm. but, not, but not disclose that when they came in mm -hmm. and then – you know, 20 minutes into their meal, you, you right. realize that there's a, you know, a chihuahua in right. their handbag. <laughs> is that a violation of the law? You know, we won't, if you didn't know about it, and my staff walked right by and didn't see the dog either, you know, yeah. Yeah, th we're very reasonable people. Again, and all of our violations, because this is not critical to public health, nobody's going to die because of it. Mm -hmm. We will always give you a warning. And say, oh, look, we noticed that you have an animal in a bag sitting on a person's lap. Obviously, it's not a service animal. And we're just going to put the onus on you. We're going to mark it as a violation that you have pet animals in your establishment. Yeah. What, what, would the restaurant, mm -hmm. what would the restaurant manager on duties recourse be, though, to, to tell those folks? I mean, if, if, if we became aware of it halfway oh, through the meal. To, have to leave this, they can leave the establishment. So yeah, that, that's we, very difficult for you folks, but you can order them out of the establishment. Right. Now, can we are, are we allowed to let them stay there, or do we have to tell them to leave right now? Now, then, if you're going to let them stay, now everything goes back to the original question, right? Is that a service animal? And did, so, did if, your, if it's not a if it's not a legitimate service animal, right. Should we t ask them that they by law that they would have to leave the restaurant? Yes. Okay, uh, that's important for us to know because we yep. have this problem. Pretty routinely in our restaurants. I'm sure we get complaints all the time. It's not useful. It's Costco. It's Sam's Club. It's you know not only the restaurants. We have tons of Starbucks that have mm -hmm. outdoor dining areas. We even have um, food establishments on websites that actually say, "Go ahead, we're pet friendly. Bring your animals here." Uh, and we have not to. right. And the only thing we've gotten from our AG is that we have to see it. We can oh, and we have to take the pictures of it. If you send me a picture of it, I can't verify time, date, or whether that's an AI generated photo nowadays. But 
yeah, we have to actually physically see the violation to market. And we okay. will send an inspector out. So again, here's real life. We get the call. Oh, Starbucks so-and-so is allowing dogs in the facility. Can you please check it out? So we'll get there within 24 to 48 hours, right? <laughs> and then we're going to ask, we're not going to see the dog. And we're just going to remind the establishment, please don't let dogs in your establishment. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, no and so Peter Oshiro, is it fair to say then that the restaurant tour can create a script for their um, hostess, host, um, wait staff? Yeah, yeah. Say, exactly. you know, right? And, yeah, yeah. and what would those words be to the person who's walking in with their chihuahua in their right. living Right. So I'll, I'll send you a document that was actually written in 2014 and it's still valid then. It was signed by myself and the um, program manager of the Disabled Communication Access, Disabled, Disability and Communication communication access board so through the department of justice so we have basically exactly what you can and cannot ask so i will make sure i send that document to you thank you because tom that would be so helpful for us to absolutely yeah, yeah. To yeah we don't want to break the law or offend anyone um, but exactly. we want to make sure we're compliant Sure. Exactly. And that's all we're going to be saying, you know, maybe yep. the person who's bringing in the Chihuahua, you know, isn't right. aware that we can get in trouble as a restaurateur. Yeah, you exactly. know, that we're just following the law. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how I would present it. Right, Tom? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Nice. And, nice. And eventually, when uh, pests would be allowed, they would, would only be out, uh, allowed on an outside lanai, correct? Correct. That's the current allowance from the FDA is that we only outdoor dining areas. It's interesting that they that they're you know specifically talking about dogs when there's so many other types of pets. You know, I know that, that people Again, they, might they, want to bring They didn't want to open that door, so it does right. not say it cats. Was, it does not say birds. Right. It's it seems discriminatory yeah. <laughs> against yes, it is. certain animals. <laughs> 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 All right, so we've got five more minutes as, okay. as um, for the show, and I just want to talk about that the new vendor, Peter Oshiro. Yeah, please, please that's really. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's really important about our new IT vendor. We apologize that you know we got actually back in November, December, we put it out for bid. The contract expired in December of last year with um the current vendor, DHD Tyler Tech. This new vendor, we have to go through a procurement process because if it's over a hundred thousand dollars, it has to go to a silent bid. We pick the vendor. The vendor is having um, issues dealing with the bureaucracy and getting it approved, which is causing the delay. This um, new vendor, I can't name them, but again, what it's supposed to do is we're going to start going full on into credit card or acceptance of plastic for um, payments for our fees, and that's really, really critical because on our end. Um, accepting personal checks is such a headache, and you guys probably don't accept personal checks anymore because of that from your customers. But we are still locked in the 1950s, and the department does not have a centralized way to accept plastic. So we need to find a vendor that actually can do it and clear all the credit cards. So this vendor that we're looking at has the ability to do that. So we will soon be um, venturing into that arena. So that would make it easier for everybody. So even walk-in payments, people that are doing special event permits, We'll have a point of sale terminal, same thing like mm -hmm. any other restaurant to accept a credit card for payment. And we will stop actually accepting checks at that point in time now because of processing costs. So we'll be only cash and um, credit plastic. But Thank yeah, that's, you. yeah, we really apologize for that. And that's, they're connected to the public website. So that is down to, um, but anybody can access any of them. It has not stopped any of our inspections. We still do it. We're back to paper and pen. So we will get you a copy of their report if asked, and we just have to scan it and send it out. So that's where we are now. Thank you. So as I wind down the show, I just want to ask Peter Belisario, do you have any final questions for Peter or Cheryl? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, when the new regulations uh, come out with the new food code, um, you know, what is the communication that you will be getting to all the restaurants? Most restaurants, uh, you know, are very proactive mm -hmm. about making sure they have have the up to date information, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but some do not. Um, is you know, how would you be getting out the information to all the different restaurants? Yeah, good question. So we start with you folks. We start with the industry trade group. So typically, before I passed any um, legislation, way back when we introduced the placard system and the huge increase in fees. I made sure I met with the executive boards of Hawaii Restaurant Association, Hawaii Food Manufacturers, Hawaii Food Industry, 
hotel, Hawaii hotel and lodging, make sure everybody was on board before we even went to public hearing. So our public hearings were a ghost town, which is what we actually want, where all the questions have been answered and there's nothing controversial being jumped on people. So that's typically how we're gonna do it. We're gonna go through the trade organizations. By law, we have to take out a publication in the paper announcing that we are holding public hearings, but by then that's too late. So we really try to work through you folks first to get the word out. And I will attend any meetings, uh, any anywhere, anytime to explain what we're trying to do. That's never an issue with us. Thank you. Tom Jones, any questions for Peter Oshiro before we close the show? You know, I think you did a really great job of of um, explaining all these things. And um, again, you know, the the you know the Hawaii State Health Department, and I've worked in many states uh, around the country, um, is always very uh, you know inclusive. I guess it's the Aloha spirit here, or whatever. But they mm -hmm. they do a, a a good job of reaching out and trying to make sure that we're compliant, as opposed to going around and and inspecting us and and you know giving us a hard time. So really appreciate that. Um, it's it benefits the the businesses, and I think it also yeah. in the long term benefits the general public. So, you know, kudos to the health department. No, and the law goes both ways. Other states have such a difficult time working with their restaurant associations, and I'm so thankful that we do not. So, uh, my life is very easy dealing with some industry here. Yeah, and I, I think we have a pretty good record of public health, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, very. It's actually again, I can go over that at another meeting. But as far as um how many violations, the reduction in violations that we've seen over the past seven years has been tremendous. And that's all, you know, basically um, restaurant and you folks cooperate, industry cooperating with us and all trying to protect public health. So we're very think, happy with the program and you folks. Yeah. And that that's especially challenging in Hawaii with, you know, that we, we are probably the most ethnically diverse, um, yeah. you know, community in the country. Yeah. And we have all kinds of food, including yeah. raw foods and things like yeah. that, poke yeah. everywhere, all these things. And, yeah. and I think we do a really, really good job. So uh, I think it's a uh, you know, tribute to, to both sides of, of the health yeah. department and the Definitely. industry. Definitely. So Peter Oshiro, any final statements before we close the show? No, uh, just thanks for having me here. And it, it is about communication and transparency. And then that most will solve most of our problems here in the world, <laughs> if we can do both. <laughs> Sure. Thank you. So I'd like to really thank my guests for being here on Restaurants of Hawaii on the Think Tech platform. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the organization unifying, representing, and supporting the Hawaii restaurant and food service industry. And remember, nourish connections, savor life, eat well, and live well. We'll see you at our next show. Mm -hmm.